afternoon to everyone and welcome to our ergotherapy webinar. I think uh, we're all getting used to this sort of work environment and I'm sure you've had your fair shares of video calls and, and setups and things. Um, actually, I was laughing because just as I was about to, to hit onto the webinar, I needed to do some emergency babysitting. So I now have a five-year-old sitting next to me. And I think we just wing most of it um, in terms of our work days with COVID around. And today is really casual. I want it to be interactive. So we're going to share some of our physio background in terms of how to set up your home office and how to utilize things so that we're not getting these repetitive strain injuries, which a lot of us have suffered even pre-COVID when we were in an office environment. And we're just going to share our thoughts with regards to some simple hacks that you can do whilst at home. The benefits of actually investing in an ergonomic chair. You know, I often laugh within my private practice of patients that they always ask me about running shoes and which is the best bike setup for their triathlons and things. But eight hours of our day is spent behind this tiny screen, which is our laptops, and they're sitting on whatever they can find around the house. And yet we look so carefully at our sports and at our fitness routines and correct postures and things there, but this is actually where we need to focus. And this is where we should be trying to invest if we do have the means in a proper home setup. So as I said, you can see there's a, a questions little drop down. If you have anything while I am talking, we will address those if I, if I see them come up. Otherwise, at the end, we'll leave a little bit of time. We know how busy your afternoons are. We know how busy your life is at, at right now, so we're not going to prolong it. And we're just going to chat through the ideal office setup. Yes, some of our products will be involved, but there's also simple ways that we can hack the system and to, to just make small adjustments at home. I'm going to pop through a slideshow, and if there are any things on the slides that you do need to uh, want us to, to address, then as we said, just answer those, uh, pop into the question bar at the bottom. So this is a, a mild sort of screening of one's day, and this was definitely before COVID because we did have the sort of commute to get to work. We were maybe up the stairs to get to our office. We maybe popped out for lunch. Nowadays, I would say that we're sitting even more than 15 hours. As physios, we are seeing even more neck impingements, headaches, tension in the back, because a lot of us can get get up straight from the morning, out of bed, and we into that home office. So 15 hours back in the day might look like 19 hours with COVID being around and us having to adapt to the, the new work home lifestyle. But you can see there that it's not just the sitting that we're doing behind our laptops. We sit to eat, we sit to maybe do homework with the kids, we sit to drive somewhere to drop something off, and we sit in normally in the evenings on our sort of downtime. The body was not designed to sit. The body is designed to move. And how do we adapt our work life or our surroundings to us as opposed to us trying to adapt to the environment that we're in? And that's essentially what ergonomics means. It means how do I adapt my, my task or my environment to me? Too often we see people trying to sit on one leg or reach far out because the mouse uh, cable is too short. And that is what's causing you those visits to the physio or to the chiro repetitively because you're trying to match your body to the equipment around it. I like this saying that they say sitting is the new smoking and it certainly is. We've seen massive influx of cardiovascular disease, an increase in diabetes, increase in just general health from this new, what I would call an epidemic, is the seated position. What happens and why do we go into pain? Why do we start to feel that tightness in our body? The body fatigues, we get spasm and muscle contraction, our pain receptors start to kick in, and then we have a decreased blood flow. Something as simple as the seat that you're sitting on. Is the seat pan, the seat depth, is that too short? Is it cutting you midway in your thigh and causing the decrease in blood flow? We then try to compensate with other muscle groups and things, and that's when we're causing a pain cycle and a spasmic response. I'm going to show you a quick video. 
This is a general setup. This is using our ergotherapy products. Maybe some of you have some of these products and you can adapt, but this is a, this is a general basic setup and we hope that you will learn some tips from that. Just in terms of a webinar, it's quite hard for me to physically show the things that I want to. So we're going to watch the video and then we'll speak about some of those, those setups going along. Last time the video didn't click on from this presentation. So bear with me if, it, if the connection isn't great. I will try my best to maybe open it up in another folder. Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Abby, and I'm a physio with Ergotherapy Solutions. I'm going to show you the best way to set up your chair at your desk. Step one, let's start by adjusting your chair height so that your forearms are in line with the desk and parallel to the ground. Your elbows should roughly be at a 90 degree angle. Ensure that your knees are level with or slightly lower than your hips. If your feet do not rest firmly on the floor, place a foot rest underneath them. You can even use a book, a file, or a small. Sorry, everyone. I think that's the connection. Let me just try. Box. There we Adjust go. Adjust your armrests according to your needs. You can use them as an extension of your desk, or choose to lower them and slide them underneath the desk. Make sure that your computer equipment is close enough to you so that you do not have to lean forwards to reach your keyboard. Set your backrest in a comfortable working position. Ensure that your chair, keyboard, and screen are all in alignment. Your screen should be positioned at a comfortable reading distance for you. For most people, this is about an arm's length away. Your eyes should ideally be level with the upper third of your screen, as this helps to keep your neck in a neutral position. If your screen is not height adjustable, use a monitor razor. If you're using more than one screen, make sure that they're set at equal heights and are angled towards each other. Use your telephone on your non-dominant side to avoid unnecessary neck strain. Laptops create an ergonomic challenge as your screen is invariably too low. An ergoprop helps to raise the screen height slightly whilst keeping your wrists at a comfortable angle. It is ideal to rather use a separate keyboard and mouse and raise the laptop to eye level. Enjoy thriving at work. All right, so that's obviously in an ideal world if we all had an adjustable chair or we all had something that we could work with. We're going to go through the anatomy of the body and some of the rep repetitive strains that we've seen as physios arrive at our practice, people with uh, sort of headaches, wrist injuries, why are they getting pain behind their legs, and let's see how we can shift some of that in order to avoid those injuries. So we'll start from the top. We're going to start with the headaches and neck pain will move all the way down into the lower back. You can see here that this was a study done just in general with office workers and the areas of pain that most people experience. There is a huge percentage with regards to upper back. I think this comes from the fact that laptops were initially just designed for some work at the airport or to bring some of my work home to just quickly finish an email or two. But the reality is, especially now with COVID, most of us are spending 90% of the time on this tiny screen. The angle is not ideal. No matter how short or tall you are, you're going to be looking down. No matter um, how so, sort of desk surface has been set up. I am going to be at an awkward angle to still use my numeric pad. The trackpad is horrific for wrist rotation because you're always in that rotation to get to that middle of the trackpad. So first things first, if you have the opportunity to have a separate screen, separate keyboard and mouse you saw on that video to try and get the screen at eye level. The reason being is the moment that the screen is lower than eye level, our neck is at a tilt. So we're putting ex excess pressure on the discs in our neck and we're putting either these anterior muscles in the front or the ones behind in strain or overstretch. Another thing that we often see is that people work lean over to one side. So maybe you're at a kitchen counter, maybe you're at a corner unit, and you are tilted over towards one side. No doubt you're going to lean into the one shoulder more, causing repetitive strain on that shoulder, and those hips are going to be in a twisted angle. That is going to cause 
extreme tightness within your trunk area, within your torso, and eventually your lower back hips are going to start to niggle and tell you that something's not great. So what we say is try and get everything as centered as possible, keep things as square as possible. In terms of your phone, if you're working both phone and laptop or phone and keyboard, watch that repetitive movement of keeping my phone at my ear to my shoulder. You can imagine shortening those muscles and putting them under strain while I type and hold my phone is going to cause what we call our trapezius and our levator muscles to spasm up and go into a pain cycle. Let's invest in some cheap headphones, plug them in while you're on your conference calls, swap your phone to the other ear so that you just have a bit of a balance between those rotations, or otherwise just pop your phone onto speaker. Another thing that we see with regards to shoulder and neck pain is the mouse. We actually call it the runaway mouse and it can often cause what you see as rotator cuff syndrome because during the day you might start with your mouse nicely centered to you. Eventually a coffee cup gets in between you and your mouse, your phone gets in between you and your mouse and you eventually have that mouse trailing right out to the side and my arm is in full extension. That not only will cause shoulder injuries, but wrist injuries too. We want my position as centered as possible and my keyboard and mouse as close to me as possible. You can see that is the reason that we built armrests into our chairs. So a lot of the other ergotherapy products actually have 3D armrests, which mean that I can actually angle my armrests in towards me if I'm maybe of a smaller frame, or if I need them closer to the desk, I drag them closer in line with my desk or they push back to shoot out the way. So that's a really great um, ergonomic uh, feature to look out for. Not only do my armrests go up and down for if I want to take them under the desk, but I can actually angle them in. And try to teach yourself to use armrests. If you have them, it deloads my shoulder. So it forces me to actually sit back, use the backrest of my chair and lean on my armrests. If you don't have armrests, scoot yourself under the desk, not too low because then you are going to hunch your shoulders to reach up to your keyboard, but scoot yourself under so you can use the desk to lean on. The moment that my shoulders are relaxed, my neck muscles and upper back are going to relax too. Another big one that we see is a lot of you have tried to lift your keyboard up um, or your laptop up to get the screen height, but then you end up hunching the wrists at that awkward angle as well as the shoulders. Our ergo prop, which may, maybe some of you have invested in, is a fantastic little tilt. It puts that laptop at a good angle for my wrists and then does raise the screen to a nice height. Another great, great investment is monitor arms. Again, make sure where you install your monitor arms is correct. If I have my monitor arms over to the side, if I'm looking at that angle for most of the day, it's no wonder I'm going to start to get disc and nerve problems in my neck. My neck needs to remain at neutral. I need to be in line with those screens at eye level, ideally. Clear the space on your desk. I know this is a huge one with regards to working at home. Perhaps we know we don't all have the space to have a separate office. So try to make sure that you set up a designated area, clear the desk. Papers and things should not be in the way of me and my keyboard. Why? Because then I'm reaching over my papers to get to my keyboard and that is a tough position for my arms to be in most of the day. Think about holding a heavy object or holding maybe your toddler or your child. If you're holding them out there, the body's under immense stress. If I keep it close to me, it's a lot easier. So bring everything closer to you. Bring that keyboard close. Bring your notes rather over to the side of your keyboard and keep that mouse centered. That's the ergo pop that I spoke about, a really great little in a, in a, inexpensive tool that you can travel with, it folds up and you can flip that straight into your laptop bag. All right, choose the height of your chair. How do I know how I should be sitting? A lot of my patients put their seat too low because we have this old school sort of theory or thought that your feet must be flat on the ground. We've, we've thrown that out the window. We rather want you at the right height for your desk. The moment that I put my feet flat on the ground, if the desk is too high, I'm then going to lift my mid spine. My shoulders are going to hunch to try and get to my keyboard. 
lift yourself up so that your arms are at 90 or your arm rests are in line with your desk. And then we rather pop something like a footrest uh, or a few books under your feet so that they are relaxed onto the surface. But please watch the height of your chair. If you're sitting on a chair that's too high for you, so maybe you've chosen like a bar chair or something, you're then going to be leaning down to get to your keyboard and hunching over. So rather look for something that is ideal. If your seat doesn't adjust, why not use a pillow or something in the backrest just to get yourself at that correct height. A lot of chairs on the market are saying that they are ergonomic due to the fact that they go up and down. What makes an ergonomic chair is the features, but the design of the lumbar support. We are seeing too many back, lower back injuries, disc replacements at people who are only in their late 20s, maybe 30s. And it's from that position of sitting hunched over a chair. You can see here, if my hips were higher than my knees, I'm then going to pinch my hip flexors. The moment my hip flexors are pinched, my lower back starts to ache. And that's where an ergonomic chair has the right cushioning for the lower back. It puts my pelvis in a good position. My legs are fully supported and I can lean back into the back of the chair and rest while I'm working. Too many people do the work for the chair as opposed to the chair doing the work for you. And that's what makes a good ergonomic chair. How is the backrest designed? Does it give me the adjustability to adapt to my body? We'll move down in terms of anatomy now into the forearms. We see a lot of carpal tunnel syndrome, wrist pain, pins and needles in the arm. And this, as I said, it can be the position of my laptop. Maybe I've propped it up too much. It can be the angle of my wrist on my mouse. Remember that your mouse needs to be close and your hand needs to be relaxed onto the mouse. A lot of patients get forearm pain and wrist pain because they're clenching the mouse. So try to remember to relax your hand onto the mouse. Which mouse should I buy? One that fits your hand. So make sure that you have the palm of your hand over your mouse and it's not too big so you're almost straining to click and it's not too small so you're hunching those fingers and those knuckles up. I had a question on one of the last webinars about a lateral mouse. So what is what are the benef benefits of vertical and lateral mouses? Vertical, great, because you actually are getting the wrist not at a twisted angle, but it's almost it almost looks like it's the, the the right click of the mouse is at your thumb. So you just it's just a hand movement or just a little finger movement as opposed to a wrist movement all over the place as the day goes on. Lower back pain, why do I have lower back pain? We need to look at a few things here. We would need to see when is my back pain occurring? Am I waking up with a sore back? Am I then fine as the day goes on? Then I would say, have a look at your mattress, see what you're sleeping on. A firmer mattress generally is better. Sleeping position, are you maybe on your tummy and you're putting your spine in that arched position for most of the night? Ideally, we want to sleep flat on the back or otherwise on your side, pillow between the legs. Or are you saying, Karen, I'm perfectly fine, but it's the moment that I sit at my laptop. Then, as we said, that rotation of the pelvis is horrific for the spine and it's causing excess pressure. It's causing tightness of muscles around there, maybe some nerve impingement if you are feeling it down your leg and you're saying that it gives me sort of pins and needles um, as the day goes on. What is ideal? Ideally, we want full lumbar support. So a lot of the time we see people perching on the edge of their seat and they actually lose contact with that. Why would I perch? I perch because I'm either too far away from what I'm working on, so you're trying to get to it. So rather sit back and bring that laptop and workspace closer to you. It can be, as I said in the beginning, the seat depth. Is that chair that you've chosen from your dining room too short in terms of the seat size? Is it cutting you midway in terms of your hamstrings? That cuts off blood flow, causes neural impingement and things. Or is maybe the seat depth too long for you that it's now hitting you behind your knees so you have more ease to actually perch forward and give yourself relief. Another great thing about the ergotherapy chairs, again, most of them come with a seat slider. So I get my seat 
three to four finger spaces from behind my knee to the seat pan. That is ideal. That means my hamstrings are supported so my legs will relax and my lower back does not have to do the work. Another thing with lower back pain, as I mentioned before, is the twisting. So maybe you just have a dominance that you lean over to one side. Perhaps you just have your workspace a little bit off center. So that twist in your lower spine is going to tell the body there's something not right and pain reception starts to come. You can see here, this was the load on the L3 disc. So that's my third vertebra from the bottom. So my low, my lumbar third vertebra in a 70 kg person. So just on average, and that's the amount of pressure. So the 250 Newtons, very low. We lying on our back, we comfortable. The moment that you are, you can jump to the, the last one, bending forward while seating. So that means not using my back rest and hunching over my laptop. It's no wonder we're causing ourselves back injuries. We're loading that L3 disc, let alone all the others, with a thousand newtons of pressure. It's gone up four times from when I got out of bed. Some tips for your paperwork in terms of that lower back pain with the twisting. Get it up at a nice height, maybe on a recipe book holder or a document holder, so that when you have your notes, you're not constantly twisting side to side and causing strain on that lower region of the back. A great, great alternative is a sit to stand station. So as I said, the body should be moving as much as possible. What we were seeing with just a general standing desk, and perhaps you've done this at home during COVID, you've made yourself a little uh, makeshift stand station. Just watch in terms of your standing position. Are you standing centered? Is your screen at the right height in that standing station? A lot of the time when it's just a fixed standing station, we, we tend to get hip pain or knee pain. And that's because you are leaning more to your dominant side as you're in that standing position. The very desks are great. They have different levels which they can go up to. So I can take all those principles that I've learned from today and get my screen at an eye level. I can get my elbows in line with the top of the desk and that the station adapts to me. If you haven't seen our very desk product, please hop onto our website and have a look. Within three seconds, my whole workstation is from the bottom to the top and then I can stand and work for 20 minutes. That would be about our starting point. So don't make yourself a standing station or perhaps invest in a very desk and then stand the whole day. There's no point. Again, you're putting your body in a static position. We want change. We want the body to move from standing to sitting to walking. Try and set a reminder on your phone. There are many, many apps that will remind you time to stand. Go grab yourself another coffee or glass of water. Try and move as much as you can in your day. You may have said, look, I followed all of these tips and I'm still uncomfortable. We need to look at the hours of how long we sit. Most of you will probably sit for two hours at a time and not even know that that amount has gone by. So really pop a sticky note next to you or a reminder on your phone so that you get moving. You can see here the standing uh, lifestyle, the benefits of it, 84% less fatigue, 83% better overall. I can say from a private practice myself, the moment that my patients have invested in something like a standard uh, standing desk, their visits to the physio come down because they themselves are moving the body. They're getting more blood flow. They have more energy at work and they're avoiding the, the injury that then when they need to actually exert or maybe go on their trail run, etc., the body is used to those engagements and those muscles that are contracted while standing. Foot rests are great. A lot of people think that they're just for short people. This is not the case. Yes, it's good if we need to get the seat higher and then your legs are dangling, but by firstly resting your feet onto something, your brain has a sort of receptive response that it's balanced and the foot is at that arched, what we call dorsiflexion, so it's just at that little flex, and that opens more blood flow to your lower back and to the muscles within the legs, so decrease in swelling and varicose veins and things. But what I have found a footrest helps with, and perhaps this is something you're guilty of, is 
trying to sit on the one leg. So a lot of people tuck their one leg either under their bottom or maybe ladies, you cross your legs over. That's horrific for your sort of injury reception and things. Grab a footrest, pop it underneath you. They're inexpensive. There's many different designs. We have one called the Kelly footrest, which is on the far right. And that adjusts in six or seven different levels so that I can just variate it through the day. Perhaps you can't afford a standing desk, invest in a footrest. Get something underneath those feet so that my ergonomic position is ideal. This is just in terms of a standing posture how we should uh, be in position, same things go. Get those elbows relaxed onto the desk so you're not hunching your shoulders, screens at eye level, and try to keep your feet as square as possible. We're all guilty of sort of leaning over into the one hip, and it really does cause uh, irritation within the lower back. Take breaks with movement. Please try and do a few stretches and things. I'm gonna quickly, because we do still have time, I just want to go through some of the stretches that you can do at home. They are quick and easy. They really uh, do not require a lot of time. Um, and while I look for that, you can perhaps just, um, if you have any questions and you wanting to know a bit more, then pop that into our question bar. One that does come up, a question, and I haven't looked yet, is the benefits of sitting on a ball. Now, a ball is great in terms of variability. So yes, I've changed my I've changed my positioning from from maybe a, a hard seat, and I'm now having to activate my core and engage. But a lot of the time, we do find that it does not provide the right height. So it's too small, it's too low, and then you do end up hunching over your laptop. Otherwise, we find that the lower back gets tired. It's completely impossible for one to uh, be in that position without any back rest support for that amount of time. Uh, yes, I am engaging in, in, my, in my core to balance, but it, the amount of stress that my spinal stabilizers have from not having engagement with, say, a lumbar support is huge. So a ball isn't ideal for long term. Maybe if you are going to use it for maybe 20 minutes at a time, then it is a nice variation to, to a sit station. All right, so we're going to start from the neck. You will see here that there's just some quick and easy stretches to do. And please try to do these maybe every two hours or so to give the body just a bit of relief. So your neck stretches is your frontal stretch. You can see you pop your hands behind your head and just pull to the front to ease that tension at the back of your neck. Same thing side to side. We just rotate side to side, putting a little bit of pressure on top so that we're giving those muscles a nice elongated stance. If you're feeling it's more in, the, in your upper back or your shoulders, pop a hand behind you. All of these you can do while you're working, so why not? And then rotate your head down under with a little bit of force on top so that you're getting the full stretch in the upper back. Again, if you do have a sort of medical diagnosis, then please rather check with your physio or with your doctor. Don't attempt these if you do know that you have a, a constant injury. Shoulder stretches, great. While I'm sitting at my desk, just extend those arms above your head so you're just easing out those muscles that have been in that hunched over position for so long. Take that stretch right out to the front. We can take the arm over across so that we feel a nice arm stretch. If perhaps you've had to type really a long sort of uh, article or report, try and give your arms those change in positions so that you have that movement. Stretching to the back, I feel is great. A lot of my patients who have shoulder injuries, it's because we hunched over phones. We hunched over our food that we eat. We hunched over a keyboard. I'm seeing a massive increase in terms of the the kids, the children that have had to work at home during this time. And it's no wonder because they haven't had that posterior engagement much. They're constantly on iPads, on phones, on schoolwork. So these chest muscles get too tight and they, they become under strain. Some wrist ones, these are great. Get into what we call like a prayer position with your hands and rotate backwards and forwards so that I'm loosening out that joint that's had to have the strain for most of the day. 
your little breaks that you do in between try and do those stretches while you're walking to the kitchen or while you're going to to grab that refill of water lower back hamstring stretch yes our hamstrings are linked to the lower back via the glutes via your buttocks so open up that nerve line pull your toe up towards your chest so that you're giving the the legs some some ease from sitting on our glutes for most of the day external rotation of the leg to the side you'll feel a great stretch within your lower back into the side of your leg which we call your itb i'm sure my runners would know what what that feels like but imagine you sitting on your thighs for those eight to twelve hours give them some movements and some stretching while you're at your desk rotations of your waist and into your hips excellent one just to give that lower back and those discs a little bit of ease as you work through the day your extensions again i spoke about the chest muscles open them up and give that spine a little bit of a curve so that we embracing those core muscles and giving ourselves some nice ease in terms of that static position that we've been in i'm going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes um, and it really rings true to being a healthcare professional and working now on ergonomics where we've seen a lot of the injuries in my practice are coming from most people having to spend their, their day at work. And the quote says, treat your body like the most amazing machine ever designed because that's what it is. Fuel it properly, challenge it, give it some rest, listen to it and be grateful for it every day. Please, 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 as I said right in the beginning, make sure that you're investing in something that you're working on for eight to 12 hours. There's no point in us having the latest iPhone or the greatest Nike shoes when this is actually where we are sitting for the majority of our time. If you can't afford an ergonomic chair, make those changes. Do you have a small pillow that you can put in the, in the neck of your, in the nape of your back? Is my chair maybe too short? Let me grab a pillow and sit up onto something. Um, invest in a separate keyboard and mouse. It's really not a lot of money, but it's going to make a massive difference because it means that I can get my screen up to the correct height and I can get my arms as loose and as relaxed as possible. A lot of questions are coming through with regards to the seat positioning. So I'm just going to go over that again. It says, can you repeat the three to four fingers from your seat? So what I mean is your hamstrings, so the back of your thighs. The moment that my seat is either too long, so it's hitting me sort of at, at my calf or at the back of my knee, or if it's too short and it's cutting me halfway in my thigh, that's going to cause issue. So ideally, when you're sitting in your chair, you want to take your three fingers, prop them together, and put that behind your knee, when your knee is at that, to that bent position. From there, it should meet your seat. So if you're finding a massive gap from behind those three fingers to where your actual seat is, is starting, you've got a problem. I need to now extend that seat with perhaps a seat slider, which comes in all of our chairs, or I need to make it now shorter because it's now hitting me on those fingers there isn't enough space for me to put the three fingers that means your seat pan is actually too short uh, so too long sorry so then i would want uh, then what i would do is either shorten my seat if i had the adjustability or perhaps maybe put a cushion or something behind your back so that you can scoot forward a little bit more there's a lot of question coming up with regards to mouse and where it should be your mouse needs to be as centered as possible now obviously when you're working with a keyboard it is going to go slightly to the right or to the left but what i was saying in terms of your shoulder and your neck pain is if you find that the angle of your hand is too far out so it should be in line with your elbow at a straight line no not more to the right or to the left you need to keep it aligned with your elbow you are going to get neck pain if that mouse starts to trail off to one side a lot of people have things in between or perhaps they like to lean into the desk on the elbow to that one side that is going to cause your wrist to rotate out 
and it's going to cause neck impingement and things. So I want my keyboard, my B on my keyboard for belly button. I want that centered. So I first set up my keyboard and then I put my mouse directly next to my laptop. Don't create space between your laptop and your mouse. That's going to cause my shoulder to rotate and it's going to cause neck pain. There's been some questions coming up here with regards to why can't I use my trackpad. When you use a trackpad on your laptop, you're angling firstly your elbows at an awkward position. And a lot of the time, that repetitive wrist movement, because you, you can't just use your fingers for your trackpad. At that sort of awkward angle of your hand, you're going to have to move your wrist while you're typing and not while you're doing your daily task. So the moment that I've got my elbows angled outward, I've now put my spine at almost like a hunched position as opposed to back and square. And then my wrist is creating a constant rotation and an irritation. And that's when that carpal nerve on the side starts to get pinched and then people do suffer from carpal tunnel. They're asking if I can repeat the size of your mouse. Your size of your mouse should be just fitting with your hand. So try to uh, keep your, your mouse sort of in the cushion of your hand, in the palm of your hand, and that should be a good fit for you. There's been some questions about those spring cushions that we can put on. You'll see on our website, we don't really recommend them. We don't sell them. And that is because the moment that I'm putting a lumbar spring support into the lumbar of my chair, the lower back position of my chair, I then lose contact with the upper back of the chair because it's pushing me so far forward. Yes, great that I'm getting the support in terms of my lumbar spine, but you then end up getting neck and upper back tension because you don't have support with something that's supporting you. A great ergonomic solution or ergonomic chair would be just a slight arch in the lower back, but then to educate myself to sit back in my chair. Too many of us are sitting forward in our chair and we then losing that contact. Try to bring things as close to you as possible so that you can actually sit back into your chair. There's little balance cushions. I see Susan has asked you about balance cushions. That's sort of like a little pad that you can put under your, your chair, uh, not under your chair, under your bo bottom where it connects the chair, so onto the seat. Again, a nice variable solution. So maybe sit on that for 20 minutes. Yes, it's, it's filled sort of with like an air uh, cushioning, so it puts you sort of off balance. Great if you are going to engage in your core and still sit in the correct position. But when we're concentrating or we're on these calls, too often I'm seeing patients sort of lose the conscious thought of, okay, I now need to still try and sit square. And they end up trying to cheat it unconsciously, but they lean over to one side because that because it's filled with air, it's going to just deflate on the one side and you could then end up with a whole lot of other issues. The good angle of the back of the chair, Gareth is asking, um, should it be firm or should it move? Now, some of you might have purchased our Net One chair. It has a dynamic spring support in the lumbar region. And that is because we, as I keep saying, we want a bit of movement in the spine. So that spring support, it feels uh, maybe a little bit softer than a, a sort of firm lower back support but it fills your arch of your back wherever you need it. The net one is one of my favorite chairs because I believe that not all of us have the same arch in our, in our spine. We don't all have the same curves. So that spring load fits wherever I need that arch. And yes, I believe that a bit of movement in terms of frontal and leaning back is good for the spine. Again, personal preference. Some people say, no, it's too soft. I want something firm. It must put me in the in a sort of static upright posture. I'll get one range is great for that because it's designed in a good curve for the spine, but a lot of a firmer feel. It's very much personal preference, Gareth. Um, and 
it would would take some adjustment in terms of getting your spine at the correct position but that's why a lot of the ergonomic chairs are great for that because they force the body into the correct angle it's going to be pretty much like a pillow some people won't enjoy one of those orthopedic foam pillows and it will take a bit of time to get used to but once you've corrected your ergonomic position you are going to spend less money at the chiro less money at the physio and less money on anti-inflammatories there's no doubt about it i'll start to end off because i don't want to go into your evening but i see there's been many questions about will our presentation be available absolutely we have a youtube channel um, and it will be available on there i think there will be also a link if i'm not mistaken my uh, digital manager might shout at me now but i think there might be a link to to where you can where you can grab it um and let me just check on one more question here oh anti-fatigue mats there's been a few questions with regards to that great for if you do find yourself tensing while you're standing so it almost looks like a spongy mat that you would sit on you could use maybe a yoga mat that's doubled up same sort of um, cushiony support but what that does is it forces me to stand in neutral when you're on a hard floor on tiles or something it's very easy to lean into that one hip uh, anti-fatigue mat absorbs the tension within our joints and it just forces us almost like standing maybe on one of those balance pads to engage in the correct muscles and stand as firm as possible all right so please everyone it's been um, great sharing this knowledge but try to just implement a few of these tips into your daily routine as i said please get a designated area set it up that is your workspace use as much sort of around you as you can or otherwise invest 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 in your workspace you really really won't regret it and as we keep saying you will spend less money on everything else we may have more of the sessions so give us some feedback you'll see there's a poll that will go up if you'd like us to touch on other topics then we can do that but otherwise thank you for your time be blessed and stay safe during covid bye